What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com continuing our series on creating a bleacher inside of Profile Builder. So in today's video, we're gonna add the repeating components that make up the base and also the end pieces of the railing at the top. So if you're interested in Profile Builder, make sure to check that out at the SketchUpEssentials.com slash Profile Builder. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so in the last video, we talked about how to create our bleacher so that it's an assembly inside of Profile Builder. And so if we want to access that and edit it, we can open the assembly dialog and I can just use the eyedropper to select this assembly. And if you remember, right now we've got this set up where it's automatically adding in the seating contained inside of Profile Builder. But now what we want to do is we want to add the different supports that get brought in here um, to our assembly. So to start off, we're going to go ahead and we're going to model out the support. And so to do that, I'm just going to start from the end right here and I'm just going to model this out really quick and I'll probably speed this up because there's really no reason for me to do it slowly. If you have any questions about anything that I do here then uh, go ahead and ask. All right, so now we have our support in here. And so what we wanna do is we wanna add our support to our assembly. So, cause what we have right now is we have all of these profiles that are extruding along a distance. Well, now we wanna add this as a component that's gonna repeat at a certain spacing inside of this assembly. And so what we wanna do is we wanna go into the tab for component. And so the component tab is gonna allow us to set something that repeats inside of our assembly. So in this situation, we have a component that we've modeled. Well, now we wanna add that by clicking on the plus button. And it's gonna give us the option to pick from model, which is what we wanna do, because we've already added this. So I'm just gonna click on pick from model, and then I'm gonna select this object right here that we've created. And so now if we were to come in here and we were to select this and update it, you can see how it's all wrong. Like none of it's right in here right now. So what we need to do is we need to set the rotation as well as the um, spacing on this. So the first thing we need to do is we need to set our rotation to something like 90 degrees. And in this case, it's probably gonna be 270 degrees because we want the back to be aligned with the back of this. So now, if I was to update this, you can see how my assembly has these out here. And so now what we need to do is we need to set the left right offset. So the left right offset is gonna allow us to align this right here. And we also need to set the up down. I may do the up down first now that I think about it. Um, so first thing we need to do is we need to take this so that it's lower. So we need to set this so that it's eight inches lower than where it is right now. So to do that, we're just gonna set our up down offset to negative eight and hit the tab key. And then we're gonna update this assembly. So you can see how now this height is aligned properly. Well, now what we need to do is we need to set this so that it's aligned with the midpoint here. So I can use the tape measure tool to figure out that this needs to be over approximately, we'll call it seven feet. So, for that, we're gonna set our left right offset to seven feet, zero inches. We'll hit the tab key. And you can see how in our preview, we can see that that took that the wrong direction. So we actually want this to be negative seven feet, zero inches, we'll hit the tab key. Then we'll go ahead and click the update button to see what that looks like. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna move this component out of the way, um, cause it's kind of blocking us right now. And I just wanna make sure we have everything aligned properly from a left right standpoint. It looks like this is centered and it looks like the height is acceptable here. And so now let's take a look at what this is doing. This is repeating this at every eight feet in our bleacher. So, which is fine, we're good with this, but the first thing we need to do is we need to set this so it has a little bit of an offset from the front and the back because we don't want it right on the end of this object. So what we wanna do is we wanna set this so that it has a start setback of something like, we'll call it, we'll call it 12 inches. So we're gonna give this a start setback of 12 inches. And then if we update this, 
you can see how what this does is this takes this and it doesn't start your first support until 12 inches from the beginning of your assembly. So now this is now offset by 12 inches from the start of your assembly. Well, we want to do the same thing at the end. We want there to be an end setback of negative 12 inches. So we're going to type in negative 12. Actually, we want it to be just one foot. So we'll type in one foot. We'll update this. You can see how this is now back offset. Okay, so now let's take a look at what this is doing. Um, so right now, if we were to add this assembly, if we were to single click, then move our mouse and click again, you can see how this is adding in supports based on that uh, based on that spacing that we set. One thing I want to point out is it's not placing these at every eight feet. It's placing them at a maximum of eight feet. So basically what happens is as you make this assembly bigger and bigger, it's adding more supports um, every time you get another section that's over eight feet. So um, if you were to uncheck this box right now, or right here, what this would do is if we were to add a new one like this, this would force your spacing to be every eight feet, but you're gonna notice here at the end, you get this extra piece in here. Um, so this is just gonna add this in and then it'll add your end piece when you end your assembly. However, if you set it to the max spacing instead, this'll space these at eight feet, or this'll space these evenly every time you reach eight feet um, between the different supports it'll add a new one in there so this max setting is going to allow you to keep this uniform while this other one would allow you to force this to have an eight foot spacing but then it would have an extra here at the end until that gets to another eight feet so hopefully that makes sense and so now that we've got this set up where it's creating our supports the only other thing we want to add in this video is we want to add the end piece right here. And so we want to set this so that this adds an end component at this end point right here and right here. And then in the next video, we'll use spans to figure out the actual spacing of this back railing. For now, we just want to model out this, um, this steel railing. And so I'm going to do that real quick and then we'll come back and talk about what we did. So we're going to do the same thing we did before where we model this out as a component. All right, and so we've created this end rail now that's in here as a component. And so what we wanna do is we wanna add that as a component that gets dropped at either end of this bleacher. So in order to do that, we're just gonna add another component. We're going to click on this button right here, and we're gonna click on this to select that rail or that end piece. And then we can go ahead and we can update our assembly here. And so what we need to do is we need to move this back approximately or about six foot eight and a quarter. So, and I'm going to turn my setbacks to zero for my end rail piece. And then if we update that, you can see how that's now aligned. And we need this to move up and that's going to have to go a little bit further. So another three and three quarters of an inch. So really this should just be back seven feet. So now that's a line there. Now we need to set the up down offset. So the up down offset is going to be two foot two inches. That may put us a little bit high. We may have to drop that back down a little bit. So in the now, what we wanna do is we wanna set this so that it only happens at the beginning and the end. So we're gonna uncheck this box right here that places this along the path. And we wanna make sure only the boxes for the front and the end are selected. So now this is gonna place this at the start and at the end of the path. So if we update our assembly, you can see how now this is just at the start and the end. And this one is going to need a start setback of negative one inch. So because this is placing this right at the beginning, we wanna set this back by an inch. So we're gonna update this. So now what this does is this comes in here and this creates our assembly with our supports and also with our front and end rail. So if I was to create a new one of these, 
you can see how now no matter where I place this, it's going to have the front and end rail and the supports based on the spacing that I set. So now our bleacher assembly has all of the component pieces that it needs and the only thing it's going to need from here is going to be the, um, is going to be the span that makes up the back piece of this bleacher. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? Have you been using Profile Builder? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.